So I really like the idea of Bishoot. Uh, not sure if you're familiar with it. So it, for for the people who aren't familiar, it's a um, sort of up and coming video streaming service that relies on um, BitTorrents. the The idea of the BitTorrent uh, to distribute the videos. Now they have their primary server, so when you upload it, it goes to them, and then they seed it out to others. But that means that other viewers can then seed it to more other viewers and this this is um really nice for quite a few reasons uh it, it's just in general more efficient on their servers which then helps keep their operating costs down that's an absolutely lovely thing uh from from business perspective but even from the viewer perspective this helps a lot in areas with bad internet um now, I know this personally uh, is important to me because a rather sizable chunk of my viewers um, come from India. Not surprised by that one because we're talking about an up-and-coming uh, industrial nation. They're not quite first world yet, but they're, they're getting there. And so you're seeing a tech presence building. Uh, so these videos are highly relevant to that area. Uh, but there are some other ones that are surprising, but um, definitely, I, I definitely like to help these people out. So we're talking like Algeria, or um, Algeria was surprisingly high. Uh, there's a decent chunk from, um, what was it? The country just above Costa Rica. It was a rather surprising amount from there as well. And at least from my understanding, the internet isn't great. Although, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, a rather sizable amount from Pakistan and Nepal as well, which, uh, again, both, as I understand it, do not have great internet by any means. And so this really helps. Uh, it helps areas like that with higher viewership. Uh, sorry, it helps areas like that with a um, better ability to view the video because you're seeding from a large amount of sources instead of just, you know, like with the way YouTube uh, works. It's just from that single channel. Uh, it really helps out a lot. And uh, recently, BitChute announced this, the uh, ability to help them um, help them out by acting as a cryptocurrency mining node. And um, I had a whole server going on here. Uh, not just this machine, but a, a full-blown server as well. And uh, so we're going to do this. Let me actually change the size of that, at least for the purposes of this video. So I have not trusted this yet, so we're going to need to do that. Which is fine. I totally wind up trusting them. Uh, and obviously, I want to run a considerably stricter environment on something like this. But So that's rather unsurprising as well. Um, have no problem with Cloudflare since they're one of the biggest CDNs in the world. This is always fun when you add uh, 
the enhanced security stuff, it uh, seeing how much stuff any for any given website you actually wind up connecting to is interesting. You really want it on on a server, though. Uh, even on some workstations in a business environment, it can be helpful for. Okay, so you're going to see a jump just while I get my password, because I obviously do not want that getting out to everybody and anybody. Okay, so now if we navigate to this, it was help us grow. Uh, so, okay, so we need to add a few more. Um, or, now I don't remember if that was a dot com or what. So Coinbase and authored mine. And now we should be good. Uh, okay, so also support jQuery. this as well. It's always a pain in the ass to set up. Uh, Sift Science. Never heard of them as a CDN before, but let's see if this starts running. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be that, or it's just really slow and has no type of progress thing, but... Uh... You're going to see another jump because I'm about to look them up. Okay, so that's fine. And that's definitely everybody. I don't know why Microsoft blocks the about pages, but. Okay. So that's set up. Um, now, just so I give them a pretty decent chunk of the server load, but also not so much that the server can't do what I need it to do, because. Um, even though I did, I, I, I did uh, transition this from, uh, it used to be running Arch Linux. It's now running uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 because I, I had a license for it and it wasn't being used. And for various various reasons, I wanted Windows Server to actually be the what the, the machine was running now. Um, it still has, I'm setting this up, uh, it's Arch in Open Indiana right now, but... Um, you know, it still has these, and these will do the occasional build job, uh, even though this is idling right now, as you can clearly see. Um, but there's also services that the 
that are run directly on the server and aren't being run on any of the virtual machines. And so it does need some um, it does need uh, so we got processor time and I want memory there as well. And, uh, yeah, this is the one we want. There you go. We really got to change the color view, so let's make you blue. Okay, um, I guess the one other thing, because I'm going to need another counter, actually, for, I think you can do this for a specific process. What options do I have? Um... Or is that under memory? <clears throat> okay, so we're going to pull up the, um, the task manager because I know I can get the specifics from here. So that's not actually using up that much, which makes sense because we're not seeing that much here either. A little bit of a spike for whatever reason, but you know, generally this is staying pretty low, uh, well below 5% on average. And the memory used from the specific process is not a whole lot, so we can crank this right up. see what happens now. Still not a whole lot going on. Uh, of course, the thing is, is it, since nothing is being shown here, and I'm pretty sure something should be shown here, uh, it, it's very well possible that literally just nothing's happening at all, because maybe it's not happy about the, um, the uh, IE protected environment. Yeah, because I'm still not seeing anything. Uh, what happens if we go over here, start mining? Okay, so I guess what I'll do is I'll leave this running for a while and then just come back to it uh, just to get an idea of how much contributions I'm actually generating here. Uh, I'm not going to be on this machine, though. But Yeah, I, ideally, because I'm not maxing this server out in the majority of cases, I'm not even above 50% in the majority of cases. It's really just the builds where it suddenly skyrockets to 80 90%. Um, that I that I need this, so I can I can leave something like this running on uh, on it for much of the time. Um, of course, I suppose the other thing is this, that there may be something blocked by the firewall that I would need to open up, possibly depending on what ports are necessary. So, we'll we'll, we'll see.
Well, as you can see, I definitely got this working. So, uh, what I'd like to do now is explain what I had to do for the folks out there like myself who are running this in quite a bit of a stricter environment. Because uh, this should work completely out of the box in the typical home environment. Um, where you have... Uh, a, I'm not sure exactly how this works. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to figure the, some of the details out with BitChute. Um, but I would expect in the typical home environment where you have a UPnP router um, that this should wind up being auto-configured for you. But um, I do not have that. Windows Firewall is quite strict, and that is a good thing as long as you're willing to um, put up with figuring some of the stuff out. So this wound up being about an hour and a half of uh, running the message analyzer and going through all the packets and filtering them appropriately. But what I did wind up coming up with, um, we've got two rules and these are essentially going to be identical um, you want port 52450 open, 52454 through 52458 open, 52474 open, 55701 open, and 64085 open. Now these are TCP ports. As far as I can tell, you do not need any UDP ports open for this. And the outbound rules are going to wind up actually being the same. Once all of those are open, the entire thing seems to work out just fine. And obviously you're going to want to tune these appropriately. Um, one thing that I did do that I would also strongly recommend that you do if you're running it in this type of environment where it's also doing other things is go into the task manager on the specific tasks. Uh, I set both of these just because in a server environment you're not really using uh, Internet Explorer or any browser for any serious purposes. Um, so I just went in to both of the processes and set priority to low just so that if anything I actually need uh, development or business-wise um, needs to be done, it'll completely bypass the Internet Explorer process and uh, get what I need done first. Because, you know, I'm not a bleeding heart. I need to get shit done. I'll help out bit shoot when I can. So performance monitor-wise, I've got it tuned so that it's definitely using up the majority of it. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Maybe it's just that it's not specifically processor time, like it's user time or something. But Internet Explorer is not using up uh, basically anything. But you can clearly see the CPU is doing work. And um, I have all of my virtual machines off. Granted, there's only two of them right now. I've, I've got to set up my whole test lab all over again. Uh, I'm not doing any file transfers or anything else, so other than the network stuff, which dude, I can do crap load of network stuff and this thing doesn't even go above 5% CPU usage. So th it's definitely, definitely using the majority of this. Uh, I mean the entirety of the CPU stuff. Um... Memory usage-wise, this isn't bad at all, and that's to be expected given that hashing is overwhelmingly CPU-intensive, and if the hash actually uses the GPU, GPU-intensive. Um, performance Monitor doesn't have any hooks into the GPU, so I would need to pull up um, a, another tool for the GPU usage, but I, I, don't, I don't have one of those installed on here. Um... Yeah, that's basically it. Then you have a working miner for BitChute going on. 